on, brother. Right on, right on sister. Do your thing. Do it. Do your thing. I can't afford to move. I have a $40,000 mortgage on my house. And I got news for you. If I have to sell my house for less than my mortgage, I have to pay that off. You know? And if I had, then I move out of here flat ass broke, and I can't afford that. Black Americans are aware of white opposition to school integration in the South. But this recent school confrontation in Brooklyn, New York, was dramatic evidence that violent resistance to mixing the races is not the exclusive domain of the white South. Now, inevitably, it has happened up South. I don't feel that the children should be bussed in. I feel that they should stay in their own area because the, this school is overcrowded as is and uh, it should be for the Canarsie children. To be very honest, I, I just don't believe it's happening. I feel I'm here, uh, it'll be 13 years. I have a son, I have a daughter. They all have friends, and they can be black, white, or yellow, and they're invited to my house. I am not a prejudiced woman. I just feel that the children should be entitled to a good education. If the school is overcrowded, then why should our children eventually be bussed out? You don't live here. I don't live here, but he belongs here, and he's in there, and he's going to stay there. If you don't want yours in there, take him out. If you don't want yours in there, you take yours out. I don't give a damn where you live. I don't care where you live. And you're too old to have any damn kids anyway. Yeah. It's straight up. For all the cannabis sativa smokers out there in Bucktown, we doing it like this. Check it out. This is the story of a place that we call home Where the kids pack heat when it's time to roam Everybody's on a scramble, life's a gamble Hopping on the white horse trying to get a handle On the fast pace that we call the last race Step with precaution when you into this place We got a spot on every block to make your dreams come true Just come correct with the snaps is all you do Don't come crying broke, still trying to cop the dope What parts are no? Do not you understand bro We can't afford to take shorts or be playing sports Empires need to be built, Mac Pins port Or even caught for them deceased ass hustlers And we still got the pound for y'all living motherfuckers What goes around comes back to the roots See you at the revolution in Crooklyn True I'm on a night farm on stroll right now through FAP, you know what I'm saying? To make I'm about to pick up the skunk really right here on Lincoln. Huh? Yeah, make I'm gonna see you over there when I get back. Nah, I'm on a cellular, you fool. Yeah, I. Yeah, I'm gonna get some of my stuff too. Alright, easy. Another day, another dollar debt. Pigs rushing the crib to catch a collar, now I'm fed what I face now Me and my people taste crown, stay your face down Why K-9 sniffs around, what they found was irrelevant The we cause, they were sent to represent and cause a ruckus amongst us Now I got more pigs rushing, we handcuffing me Taking hold of we in the custody But crushing in by some wire wrestling in peace After going through the bullshit, we get released to hit the streets Where the war's still on for all of y'all Cause they kept rule locked behind the wall, no time I'm at all a fake no jacks Perhaps when the gap's been Niggas won't even know what happened I'll be glad when my man come home Cause then this old motherfuckers grab your crumb To my niggas in Red Hood, lick a shot To all my niggas in Three Voight, lick a shot To all my niggas in Roosevelt, lick a shot And all my niggas in the 90s, just lick a shot To all my shorties all around, yeah, lick a shot To all my shorties out in bed style, lick a shot To all my shorties out in CI, lick a shot To all my shitties all in Bucktown, lick a shot the eyes read time as lead shreds fine Currency change hands from yours to mine Greenbacks talk bullshit floats on water Pager going off core coming from headquarters I was told if the secret code appears It means I'm wide one dead prepare for warfare Fuck the truce, we 
bringing the news for your loose talk, so think smart. Or rest in parts if you do start. I fuck Rick, the poor, so fuck being rich. World is born, there's a motherfucking war going on. Stand strong on your own, too, mister. Or come confront the grim ripper. Black hoodie, all black, dusty fatigues. Bloody red eyes from puffing on the black weed. On creep, he lurks in the shadow. So when you sleep in the battle, that'll be your tell you won't live the time. Salute to each and every hood label troop. Doing what you gotta do to bring in the loot. <laughs> the time has come for Armageddon. Young. Give nurture to your seeds and load up your guns. Done, I'm catching vibes that something ain't right. Getting little hits, stomach filling up tight. Damn, these little nappy head G trade bastards running around town with the crons trying to blast shit. Ain't nothing sweet like the dark streets of Bed Stuy. Creeping population ending up in CI. Take a ride through the flat with side. See the dread in the court for support. Hit we off with the lie. Now slide through the veil. Seth flow, say hello to the fam that stick the Kim as plan. Toward the east, something's going on. So burn the buds and all my peoples and Medina stay strong. say this, that uh, when it comes to the point of a full confrontation, that things can be settled in a lawful way. Of course, I think it's a great fight still ahead. Black people are not going to be vague and to integrate. This climate has changed, you see, uh, and they got to respect our own manhood and our own dignity. The crisis in the Canarsie section of Brooklyn was provoked when a group of black parents sought to enroll their 32 children in a white neighborhood school, a school to which they had been legally assigned. The case is complex and is not merely a local issue. Conflicts like this have sprung up in most northern cities. The white people in Canarsie have a right to a good neighborhood and good schools, whether these schools are all white or black and white. The black people in Brownsville have a right to get and want the best education for their children. These two very natural and human desires are almost impossible considering the existing social and economic structure in America. Instead, both groups are now involuntarily pitted against one another on the basis of race. The 32 black children live here in the Tilden Houses, a 991 unit all black project housing 4,000 people in Brooklyn's Brownsville section. In 1961, the Board of Education assigned children from this project to the racially mixed schools in the adjoining District 18. This was in line with the Board's stated policy of integration and was an attempt to relieve overcrowding in the Brownsville District. The 32 children were assigned here to PS211 in Canarsie, whose student population of 1,600 was already 30% black and Puerto Rican. The school is located several miles away from Brownsville in the 95% white section of Canarsie. These neat, almost identical attached houses, each with their tiny, well-manicured lawns, are typical of the district, populated by mostly Italian and Jewish middle-class blue-collar workers. They are fiercely proud of their homes and their community, and are quick to act when they feel their security is threatened. This is Brownsville. Its residents are not only black, they're desperately poor, and the middle-class whites in Canarsie have struggled to escape this poverty. Now they see it relentlessly pursuing them. Racism may be the underlying cause of resistance, but economics and class are also factors. The controversy began when the local Canarsie Flatbush School Board assigned the Tilden children to a nearby all-black junior high school. Previously, Tilden House children automatically were admitted to PS211, but the City Board of Education charged that this violated integration statutes, overruled the Canarsie local board, and assigned the children to 211. But before the 32 black children could attend classes in the already racially mixed school, outraged Canarsie white parents staged a protest. They occupied PS211 for three days and nights and forced the school to close. Chancellor Harvey Scribner of the New York City Schools bowed to these protests and reassigned the children to the 97% white Builders E Junior High School 20 blocks away. But Tilden House parents refused to accept the new order. They feared a hostile reception for their children in the almost all-white school, and they resented having their children shuttled back and forth from school to school. Anger and frustration 
created by the situation were primary factors in their repeated attempts to integrate their children at 211. Come on. You go on the <laughs> then the president of the Central Board of Education reversed the chancellor's ruling and directed the children to be admitted to 211, where they had been assigned in the first place. The chancellor was questioned by the press about a threatened boycott chancellor, by the whites. According to the local people, all the community schools are going to be boycotted, and the children who normally go here will not attend. Well, what? You have information that I don't have. Well, it's a list of these schools. There are two junior high schools, two high schools, and six uh, elementary schools. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, I think parents are entitled to make a decision as to whether or not they want the youngsters to go to school today. I would hope that they would not do that, but if that's what the plans are, we'll have to uh, move accordingly. Chancellor, what what about say the that decentralization <laughs> has been badly damaged because of all of this, and in effect, it's killed it here. Thank you. Well, the decentralization argument as to whether or not this damages it is a good argument. Uh, of course, if it had been working properly in the first place, uh, these youngsters would have been entered in the proper school at the beginning of the year. On the other hand, I was heartened by the fact that the board did finally come around to take care of this situation, and I thought it should be given back to them under the what I call the, the decentralization concept. But that's not the way it's working, so uh, we move from that point forward. Chancellor Scribner, is there anything that you think that you or anybody else in the education system in the city can do to cool out the parents in this neighborhood? Well, I hope we all remain cool this morning. I'm not, I, I'm not uh, you know, I'm not that well acquainted as to uh, whether or not it's cool or some other way. Fortunately, this near riot was contained by police before serious injuries were sustained. Despite this violence, Tilden parents were still determined to send their children to the school. In a further effort to exclude the black children, the Canarsi parents then called a boycott against six elementary schools and two junior high schools in the district, keeping about 10,000 white children out of school. The black parents, fearing further violence, hired a bus paid for by the Brownsville Community Council to taxi their children to and from school. Reverend Wilbert Miller from Brownsville's St. Luke's Church was one of the key strategists for Tilden House parents. What we are doing it's for all black kids throughout this country. They're watching you. I've had telephone calls to come in asking us to stick in there and hang in there. And they want to know how you, the children, are holding up. I told them I think you're courageous. I, th I told them I think you're great. And I want you to continue to stay in there and hold your heads up high. And don't look de 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 neglected or defeated, but just be determined. I want to know if anybody picking on you, if the, if the relationship is normal, and how you're getting along in school, all right? After the demonstrations had cooled off, the children entered the school unmolested and attended classes without incident. Their parents accompanied them in the buses then waited across the street behind police barriers until the children were safely inside. Later, the parents returned to Reverend Miller's St. Luke's Church in Brownsville. When we get through with that, there's something we got to do. That local school board, District 18, is illegal. And they need, they need to be put into their proper perspective that's what we need they talked about the events which led up to the present crisis about integration and quality education they were particularly incensed about what they regarded as illegal and racist motivated actions by the local school board and its president jack zimmer but jack zimmer as far as jack zimmer's concerned <laughs> part of the district 18 uh, local school board he's been working 100 percent with Kanasi. As far as the parents of uh, Tilden Houses, they haven't, he haven't, they haven't took no consideration about them, period. He would come and to them, he would go to Canarsie and get that side of the story, come to us and present what they decided. Not paying any attention to how we felt or what we was going to think or how we were going to go about what decision that they have made among themselves. But he was just playing the whole role of Canarsie. We was a neutral issue to him. Although we was in District 18, that's where our kids were supposed to go to school at. 
He paid no attention to Tilden Houses. He paid no attention to the parents of Tilden Houses and the kids. Well, we, they ran us around from school to school. And every school we went to, immediately after we got there, the police would come and invite us out. And we got tired of running around, so we went to the district office to find out where our children were supposed to go. At that moment, we didn't have a school to go to. Now, we went to the district office, and when we walked in, he, wouldn't, he, he couldn't even talk to this many black people. He told us, I can't talk to this many people. He'll talk to a group, a small group. And we told him, no, all of our children was involved. If he had anybody to talk to, tell it to every one of us and tell us now. And then he said, if we didn't leave, that he was going to call for help. So we told him, call all the help you want. We tired of running. We went to every school that our children was legally zoned into, and every one of those schools, they called the police. And we was tired of running around from place to place. And if he wanted to call the police, call them, arrest us. We don't care no more. So that's exactly what he did. He called a policeman. He marched mothers and children out of that office into a paddy wagon. And this is the one thing that stands out in my oldest son's mind that went to 211. He said, what hurt him so bad, I had never been arrested for anything, had never been in trouble with the law. To see his mother march into a paddy wagon just to trying to get him into school, it was the hurtiest thing he had to deal with through this whole crisis. And when the other group were involved, they wouldn't arrest them. They placated them. They did everything. I went into school, we were arrested twice, went into school, and they said, what an officer, do you want him arrested? <coughs> do you want him arrested? I said, for what? What am I doing wrong? But they took over school and stayed in that school for three nights and went there and begged them to get out and didn't touch them. So we got angry. And we got disturbed and we said, they could talk about 68 all they wanted, but there were 31 kids, 211 was the school, and we hadn't planned to move anywhere from that. And that's what brought it on. We, as black parents, are not going to let our children be pushed no more. And we not violent, but we stand firm, and we mean business. Now, they can stay up all night long and scheme and connive. We don't have to do that. But when you got the law and God on your side, I'd like to know what they got on theirs. You had 90 to begin with, correct? Not 30, 90. Next year, there'll be another 90. Where are they going to send them? High school right here. You don't think that the Board of Education would work out some sort of... I don't think the Board of Education had any intention of working out anything. As soon as Miller came in and says, I got 90 more, let's go. And there would have been 90 more. And the next year, there'll be another 90. And the door is open, right or wrong. And boom, there away goes the school. The white community fears that opening their school to an additional 32 black children will be the first step in the predictable cycle, which must finally result in an all-black school, neighborhood deterioration, panic selling of homes, and the flight of the whites to the suburbs. This phenomenon known as racial tipping has been a common occurrence in other communities throughout urban America. But this argument seems absurd to the black parents whose children have no school to attend. How can you blame a black parent whose neighborhood school is not capable of providing her child with a quality education for trying to bus her child into a good school, which just happens to be in a white neighborhood? Or how can one expect a white person to advocate integration when he has good reason to believe that black children moving into white schools will tip the racial balance and create another black ghetto? Wait a minute. Wait a minute. There's a series of articles written by people a lot smarter than me. Now, this is written by the New York Times, which is supposedly a school now that's where they print the which is here. Our school tipped from white to black. A school which was 98% white in ten, less than 10 years is 90% black. Read. But this had to do with people moving out of the neighborhood. Are you sure this is not the do out? Why don't you read the I article? Read. Don't bullshit with me. Because I read this, the article. Oh, you did read no, it. No, you didn't. Then you didn't. No, because then it first came the kids, and then went the kids went out of the school. Why don't you read that article? Some of the families had been moving out of the out of the neighborhood. Some of the families, correct. It started with the busing, though. The school, the went, the neighborhood went because I know that neighborhood. Do you feel like you want to move now out of the neighborhood? Do I? I can't afford to move. I have a forty thousand dollar mortgage on my house, 
And I got news for you. If I have to sell my house for less than my mortgage, I have to pay that off. You know? And if I had, then I move out of here flat ass broke, and I can't afford that. If people stay here, what makes you think that the school would change to 100% black school? If the neighborhood stays as it is, why would there be such a major change? Why would there be a major change? Are you kidding me? Have you been to all these areas where it has happened? You know, read, read, read. We don't we read. We're not stupid. We are not stupid. We are not stupid. We read the newspapers. Most of these people have been through this at least twice before. And you think that people here aren't going to run? You don't think these people aren't going to run? You're out of your mind. I think it's a whole lot of nonsense. Oh, we're not buying homes out there. We're not, I'm not in the market. My parents are not in the market for looking for a home in Canarsie. So I don't understand about their home and tipping the, the ratio balance out there in Canarsie. The children is going to school. They're getting off a bus or they're coming on city bus or school bus, whatever kind of bus you want to put it. The transportation, they're going to, into a school and when they leave that school, they're coming home. We're not interested in, in the homes out there. Why they got to sell their homes? Who asking them to sell their home? Nobody asking them to sell their home. If they sell it because they're stupid, they want to sell it. That's right. When they're overcrowded and they become more overcrowded, what happens to them? It's just chaos constantly. You know, I mean, there's so many children in the class, the teacher can control the class and, you know, teach a child. But when they're a more than they should be. I mean, how can it, you know, any teacher, I don't care who the teacher is, they can only have control over so many children at one time. What about the whole idea of the neighborhoods changing and tipping and so on? How does that work? That does nothing for me. <laughs> I mean, I don't believe tipping, I don't believe changing, you know. I mean, uh, that, I wasn't even thinking of that. I was just thinking of an overcrowded school. If the children had been white, how would you have felt about it? Same. Way. Because they do not live in Columbus. You know, I mean, these are schools for our children, whether they be black, whether they be white, whether they be purple or green. They're just for our children. Oh, that's a lot of baloney. Uh, not, no such thing as uh, overcrowding that school out there. If there, were, if there were 35 or 40 white kids out there, they have no problem in getting to that school. They'll make room for them. So we don't, we don't believe this. It's the fears of their homes. It's the fears of their style of living. It's the fears that black people will be coming out there in masses, no one can make them sell their homes. The only one can make them sell their homes if they decide to get out of their homes. The overcrowding is only a very small part of it. The overcrowding is a part of it, a very a big part of it. If they want to send kids into this area, if they want to send kids into areas, let them send kids into areas that are not overcrowded. I don't think there are any. So, but why should they, why, if they're overcrowded and we're overcrowded, why do we have to take them? Call it overcrowding, racial balance, tipping, or fight for economic survival. One thing is quite clear. Whites don't want black children in their schools or black parents in their neighborhoods. And if all else fails, they will resort to violence. And yet, blacks persist, seeking to force whites to accept them. Reverend Miller says they're fighting for principle. Since they were legally assigned to this school, they are entitled to an education there. Their rights have been violated and they will fight until these rights are restored. But beyond this, they are motivated by a desire for a quality education one that is unavailable in the black community. If local school boards can exclude black children, they say, then the 1954 Supreme Court decision outlawing school segregation will be meaningless. For years, white northerners have held white southerners up as whipping boys on the school desegregation issue. But the statistics clearly indicate that the South has less segregation than the North. 11.2 northern black students now attend all black schools, while only 9.2 southern blacks are attending segregated schools. I think that uh, uh, the, the uh, 211 is a, a good school and uh, they have better teachers and the kids will learn more. Whereas uh, the schools around here, I would be willing to put them in a neighborhood school, but they don't have the facilities like they would have in the Canarsie schools. And all we want is the kids to have a good education and that's all. In fact, the only schools we know, our children know, is District 18 schools. Our children never went to one school here in this district. And the feeding pattern has always been District 18. And we, we're about quality education and nothing else. And all this time that uh, who gave the power to the local school board to say that our children, our children came home with a report card with no junior high school assigned to, and who gave them the right to do this? So we say we're we about quality education.
for every child. But no other child will have to go through what our children is going through now. <laughs> They worried of the upset of a ratio balance. And this type of balance, they're black children. If it had been white children, it would have never been no problem. Integration is a word that we, 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 had, we never thought about integration. I hadn't thought about integration. It didn't matter, it mattered less. If my child's in a good school where he can get good education, this is the most important thing right. to most of us. Right, right. That's right. The whole thing right well, in order to get quality education in this day and time, you got to have integration. I don't know it's a sad thing to say, but this is what it boils down to. This is what it boils down to. For some reason or somehow in this society, on the educational level, in the, uh, the poor, the ghetto areas, what it is, the educational quality is not up to par. The parents express inner conflict and doubt about having to fight for their children to attend a white school. Their goal was not purely for integration with whites. Somehow, I don't know whether it's the inferior of teachers, not to quite program set up. And I notice in the, 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 the white schools or the better neighborhoods, how you want to put it, there's a certain elevation of levels of education that the, the children get there, which is denied in the, in the uh, Brownsville, or Harlem, or the other areas. It's denied. It's not coming in there. They get first choice on everything. And it's a question of the educational system within itself. The situation here and around the nation is grim. Racial violence is likely to continue. These neighborhoods are at the flashpoint. Alternatives must be explored. One approach is the funding of schools in black neighborhoods so that they can become centers of educational excellence. And if the law insists on busing for busing's sake, bus white children from underprivileged neighborhoods to black schools. This would certainly stop racial tipping of middle-class white neighborhoods into black slums. Meanwhile, as the controversy rages, it is the children who have to pay the price. We ask a parent how her child was affected by the experience. Well, some of them where they never felt that um, no distinction between the, the color of the skin, they always felt if they had a gripe about a particular person, it would just be for what the person really was or what the person did to them. But here and now, they, the, the Kanasi folks have put up the distinction between white and black, in which we um, set our children down and say, well, this person is white and black. They know their own colors of their skin. They realize this factor here. But what done happened, the, the people in Kanasi has put up this barrier here saying now when the children came up to the school and see just nothing but white parents blockading them from not going into school it's a psychological damage done to the children's mind I said, that I had in my mind, I'll come to school to get, a, to get an education, not to be scared. So, so I, I just went in school, and the principal was telling us the stuff about what happened to Jackie Robinson when he first broke into the major leagues and told us to turn, turn the other cheek and anything if they said it. So that's what I did when I got outside. I turned the other cheek. One thing I can say about our children that made us very proud is this. They thanked us for fighting for them, for their education. And I, that's, that's not a victory, that's glory for us because we are parents. And when your children can stand up and say to all of us, we thank you, Ma and Dad, for fighting for us so that we can get a decent education and we're gonna make you proud of us. I think this is where the victory and glory lies. The Kanasi people were saying they don't want no people from Brownsville in there because they, I bet they were thinking that we was dumb and that, and that we were slow learners. But when we get down to the nitty gritty, then we prove that we is just as equal as they are in, in education and that we was entitled to an education in 211. Black parents must carefully consider whether they want to expose their children to this kind of psychological damage. Does racial pride dictate an alternative course of action which will ensure our children of a quality black education in their own black communities? To this date, whiteness has been automatically considered synonymous with excellence. But that can be reversed, perhaps by drastically strengthening 
the existing black schools with massive financial aid. This would stop the cycle of blacks abandoning black schools for white schools, particularly middle-class blacks, which causes the lower-income blacks to be trapped in blackboard jungles.